Richard Luda, Vanya Rosbanum. I'm the director of Dart Mining. I'm going to introduce Bernie. Um, just a few words about Dart Mining. Um, if I may. Dart Mining is uh, floated on the stock exchange in about 2007, mid 2007 to focus on a number of Victorian-based projects, including um, gold and base metals. But it's fair to say in the last couple of years, our focus has particularly been around Corion, where we have our flagship project, the Unicorn Project, which is Molly, Copper and Silver. Um, That's a good one. Have to, be um, relieved to know that I'm not actually going to take you through our PowerPoint because it's been posted on our website in the last uh, week. But what I will show you is um, this, if I may. Depending on the share price, we're capitalised at um, anywhere between 10 and 21 million. We hit uh, 18 cents uh, this last week. Had two price queries from the ASX, which is very exciting. Uh, but uh, we have had some very interesting developments over the last, um, well, certainly over the last couple of months. And instead of taking you through the PowerPoint, as I say, it's on our website. I'll um, show you this, which appeared on Channel 7 about a week ago. A surprise mineral find in country Victoria could give us a stake in Australia's mining boom. There's global demand for the buried treasure and locals hope it will become a billion dollar bonanza. On top of Mount Unicorn in the state's far say? northeast, the views are spectacular, but miners are more excited by what they see down these holes. The samples show a world-class deposit of molybdenum, used mostly to strengthen construction steel and now on China's most wanted list. It has the potential to uh, be exporting uh, thousands of tonnes of concentrate in the future. On current prices, over a billion export dollars worth a year, as well as the boost to the local economy. Uh, somewhere between 150 and 250 jobs is what's possible. Even the initial um, building stage, like the setting up of the mine itself, is going to attract employment. There's no mine yet and no promises, but the company believes one of its biggest advantages is having the locals on side. It would certainly increase the opportunities and financially would be a great benefit. The nearest town, Corion, has seen industries like manufacturing and forestry decline and it knows what a big engineering project can mean to a small town. Corion thrived on the Snowy Mountain scheme 40 years ago. Made Corion very, very busy for many, many years. It's hard to find any locals not excited about the possibilities. Put that number of people here, well, you know, it'd have to double us, wouldn't it? Well, more, the enormous potential. Dean Felton, 7 News. Thanks. I'm afraid um, I can't go into the technical details too much. I'm actually a solicitor. I've been on the board for uh, about six years. Uh, I'm actually Dart Mining's lawyer. But with me, I have... Uh, Bernie Hochwimmer, who uh, is credited as having found or discovered the unicorn. Uh, up until a few months ago, he was also a director of Dart Mining, and I was very proud to have served on the board with him. He will give you the geological and technical information you need to take away, but it's fair to say that uh, we really believe in this project. Uh, it's exciting for us. In the next couple of weeks, we hope to announce a Jork uh, resource or a Jork compliant resource. Our metallurgical test work should follow shortly thereafter. So uh, the next couple of months for us are going to be exciting and challenging because they bring new challenges. Uh, but we uh, certainly believe in what we're doing. We certainly believe in our future. And it's with people like Bernie uh, that we'll certainly uh, go ahead in leaps and bounds. So Bernie, thank you for coming. Uh, Bernie is now consulting to us, particularly in relation to Unicorn. And uh, he very kindly uh, was able to make it today. He's driven from Albury. Thank you, Bernie, for coming down, and thank you for uh, listening. Thank you. You might have recognised uh, one of the guys in that video. Um, 
that was Dean Turnbull. So you, you're probably more familiar with Dean, I would, I would assume, from uh, Benigo days. Um, I'll just figure out how to this thing go. <coughs> I'm not sure, but Richard to do this, no doubt. <laughs> um, I've snuck a few geology slides in this. This is the uh, company um, uh, presentation, so at the risk of getting into trouble, I thought we'd, we'd have a little bit of geology in here. Um, okay, so <coughs> the um, upshot of Unicorn is it's the first climax <coughs> discovery in Australia. And they're a, fair, they're a very rare thing. There's only 16 deposits worldwide. So, uh, it probably it's a fairly important thing for Victoria, I would, I would imagine. Um, so, we've got a strong pipeline of news flying in the next three months, as uh, Richard has uh, alluded to. Uh, got maiden resource coming out. Um, some of the attributes of this, uh, this project uh, are the fact that Climax deposits tend to be fairly large. Uh, tend not to get small deposits, up around 1 billion tonnes. Um, and basically we've only really just scratched the surface. Um, favourable pro project location, the infrastructure is uh, fantastic, the hydro scheme near us. Um, I think that's probably Richard's area, I won't get into this. Uh, our tenement situation, uh, 2,400 square kilometres in the eastern part of the uh, state. Uh, perhaps uh, most of you are not familiar with this area, but you might have been uh, up in the snowfields <coughs> around Bright and Kosciuszko off to the right, over the other side of the border. So in the, in the border region of New South Wales and Victoria. Um, logistics, uh, Cairn Coburn, uh, which is the old snowy uh, township. Uh, the substation for the um, Murray 1 and Murray 2 is actually at Cairn Coburn. And it's only a hop, skip and a jump from uh, Unicorn. And as, as you might appreciate, Porphyry's, uh, the, the main thing there is uh, access to cheap power. Um, uh, and surge power, the, the Talbingo Dam off to the right, get this thing going, um, out here is um, charged up from Blaring Dam, so our peak electricity uh, uh, is used at night to shed, I mean, whenever, is used to uh, uh, get the water back up. So uh, that there is actually a power line from Talbingo and Cabramurra. Okay, so that's Unicorn there. This is the uh, silica cap. So, um, it's not a silica cap in the, in the term, in, in the sense that you have large silica sort of caps over porphyry coppers uh, that are barren. This is quite mineralized. And um, the Climax uh, deposit in uh, Colorado has a number of these with a number of uh, mineral arches in between. And this seems to be a typical feature of the Climax style. They're multi pulsed so uh, outcropping mineralization, this section here is completely mineralized. Um, the 30 ppm molly zone would go around here, probably cover around 0.7 square kilometers. Uh, teapot gully down here captures all the drainage off the mountain, which is about 900 meters or so in that area there. A little bit of farmland down here. Um, fantastic uh, local support for the project. Um, probably around 350, 400 metres above uh, the gully level there. And one proposal was to put in a added across here and do some drilling under, underground. Uh, okay. The area is grossly underexplored. I think that uh, uh, is probably an understatement. Outcropping. Uh, okay, so we've covered some of these things. Uh, the style of mineralization. This is fairly typical, rhyolite, and, and typical of the Climax style. Uh, rhyolite, uh, you have a quartz uh, molly uh, and uh, orthoclase um, stockwork. You can see the molly uh, on the boundaries of the, of the quartz here. This is fairly typical. And normally you have a stack of uh, concentric and radial veins, uh, sets with uh, network, uh, you know, stockwork in between those. Uh, major structures. Uh, just something, some of the uh, styles we see. Um, okay, this, is, this stuff is called brain rock. Sounds a bit medical. Um, 
And uh, the, one of the features of the Climax style is you have um, features that are actually magmatic rather than hydrothermal. So it's a combination of magmatic and hydrothermal mineralization. It actually just cooks itself and uh, these things are a sign of uh, um, massive amounts of water in the system that haven't actually exolved. Uh, and uh, the, the uh, textures on these things actually always point in towards the centre of the lobe. So you have a lobe which might be an expansion of a cupola and uh, uh, the cupola might actually just act as the structure. The rhyolite streams around that structure and then plumes out. Um, as it solidifies, you get these USTs, the universal solidification textures, uh, beginning to form on the outside. And they start moving inside, in towards the centre. So whilst chemically the lobes are almost indistinguishable, the only way you can track them is through these USTs and the orientation of the USTs. Uh, deep down, we, get, we do get USTs in pegmatitic form. And there's the orientation line, and we can tell where the, where the centre of this particular plume is. Uh, there's the molly, 500 metres down. Um, most of the mineral arches we've uh, outlined now are in the top section, but we are getting grades quite deep, uh, and uh, we think we've got a situation that is uh, similar to Henderson. Anyway, uh, these are fumaroles, which we get around the silica cap, they're quite common, uh, and uh, pebble breaches, uh, also in flat fractures. And uh, there's a lot of flat fractures suggesting that we're actually quite high in the system. We're getting agillary in the silica cap as well, which also suggests we're fairly high. Uh, structurally, and you have to ask yourself, well, you know, if there's only 16 of these things worldwide, why here? Why in this particular area? Uh, well, for starters, we're, we're in a good, uh, you know, address. We've got Cadia Ridgeway across here. Uh, we've got these large opening uh, basins, the tumor trough, the metatroph. Another thing is the Gilmore suture makes a large curve around here, suggesting that there's a sialic buildup in this area here. Uh, the climax style, the, the fluids are preconditioned from very thick crust uh, and a thick crust to thin crust transition. Uh, that's fairly vital. Um, and uh, you might notice these arc elements down here all converging into this area. And another thing, the splay is moving off in this area. It's almost, it's not a symmetrical uh, arrangement, but um, you do get that kind of symmetry around that area. Uh, just to give you an, uh, an outline of the uh, arc structures, obviously this, we're on a very big structure and off through to the Beardmore Mountains as well. You might notice these two structures. There's Cadia and there's Unicorn. Um, another thing you might notice is the Murray River Fracture system cross-terrain fracture, and of course Cadia has the Lachlan limit. And it's, it's rather interesting how you have your half a shelf and these two fracture systems on either side of the, sh of the shelf. Another thing is the inflection and the stable volcanics in this area here, which is rather interesting. Apart from that, the convergence of the arc elements is, occur is occurring around this sialic build up here. So this is the first time this really takes a curve around here. It's one thing having arc elements, but it's another thing having this transition. So it's basically the transition from the myogeocline to the eogeocline um, and all its arc and sediment packages in this area. I suppose this is uh, probably giving an, an idea of the pull apart structures. Of course, the late Silurian uh, was the active um, mineralization event. Unicorn hasn't been dated, but we think it's around 420. Um, around the Predolium Peak extension. Uh, you can just see the uh, mega jog in this area. And of course our, our friends from Jabari down in this part of the world. Okay, so that's uh, another shot of the mountain. Uh, 50 ppm zone, um, the silica cap, and uh, basically the activity that has been going on the last couple of years, um, exploration geochemistry to sort the grid out but also a regional exploration as well. Uh, this is molly. Copper forms a ring, as does silver, but internally it, it's quite mineralized in copper in, in terms of these styles. 
Uh, that's bismuth, and that's tellurium, forms a great big shell. This, uh, the, the grid is three kilometers by uh, two kilometers here. Uh, I'll just come back to some of that in a minute. Um, the the um, large-scale structures form a polygonal uh, pattern, but they're also reflected in the, in the, in the deposit sort of scale. Um, this is an image of molybdenite, the outer layer of molyb molybdenite. Most of the moly has been stripped off this uh, diagram, and uh, this is just um, uh, micro-alteration. You form a, a kind of polygonal pattern, follows the Empress Corridor. The, uh, the system occurs at the intersection of the, of, the, of the Empress and the Zulu Corridor here. You might notice a few of the other prospects in the area as well. This is rather, this is where the drilling activity has been in the, in the silica litho cap up here. Um, and uh, recently these polygonal elements have been involved, have been implicated in uh, Bingham mineralization. So you just get a dextral um, transtensional movement, there's rotation around that block and that's what uh, caused the emplacement of the uh, intrusion. Uh, some of the grades and our first part of the drilling, uh, earlier parts in four, hole four and five. Um, we do get higher grade zones, you know, around 0.1 moly, um, 0.15 copper and, and a little bit of silver. I should say silver in these systems is normally less than one gram per tonne. Uh, the high, the Colorado uh, climax styles have high fluorine and they tend to be the low silver ones. We've had some quite high intersections of silver. But on mass, uh, this is probably what we're sort of expecting. And uh, despite the high grades, over a large section, it is quite consistent, which is, which is quite good. Oops. Uh, some of the more recent drilling, hole nine, this goes off into the breccia zone as well. You can't see that that big 80 metre cliff is on the other side. Uh, this mineralisation actually penetrates the bre breccia, so there's some, uh, some unfinished business in this area and a northwestern load of silica coming here. This typically shows you this, the, the kind of um, arches that occur, and this is very typical of the climax style, and it's a feature of the multi pulsed um, uh, uh, intrusions of this style. And interesting, as I mentioned, the, um, <coughs> the, the, we've got some adularia in this area here and a very large geochemical ring. The, the sericitic alteration uh, on the polygon that you saw before is roughly about the size as we would expect from Henderson. Uh, now, this is an interesting scenario, Henderson. It's, Henderson is very high. It um, started off, it, it's outcropping on the surface, and then a later intrusion came in and this thing became sealed up and it just wasn't able to penetrate, it just grew. So uh, the way climax styles uh, are formed is quite different to porphyry coppers. Porphyry coppers can be telescoped, uh, so you might have an epithermal sequence over the top or in, in, in part of it. Uh, the climax style sinks. It's a tensional ar arrangement. Um, they think that you're at might have occurred about one kilometre depth. As the system sank um, down to about three to four kilometres, it really got the um, intrusion going. What actually happens is that this, this stuff here cycles around to its magma chamber and brings the molly and volatiles up. And then this stuff plumes out like a cauliflower around the core structure. And you must have that cycling. And three kilometres depth is about ideal to get rid of, rid of the gas, the bubbles, without exploding exploding the whole lot and uh, this, this is actually what we're looking for at the moment. So this Henderson produced 2009 a billion pound of molly, climax about 1.7 billion pound. So very very big targets. Uh, Henderson's been, Henderson Euro has been going since 1800s, 1880s. Um, a bit of a hiatus in the 70s. Uh, and it'll probably continue on for another 50 years. So they're very long life uh, mining scenarios. Um, okay, so let's move along. Why do we think that we've got this thing? Well, we've got drilling evidence that it's coming out, uh, petrological evidence, and also this is the um, <coughs> this is an image of um, 3D induced polarization. 
uh, survey that we did, the host pack, another thing these, oh, right. um, we think we've got a pyrite shell around here and a trumpeting package of rhyolite host. This is what we're drawing, the hole five and hole four that you saw a little while ago. Uh, that's the Molly, Molly um, map with the drawing on top. Geology, so the silica litho cap, uh, the breccia I spoke about. Uh, we've also got this uh, high meta contact metamorphic zone here with QFP in amongst it. Um, hole five, we've had up to 0.6 moly down the bottom of this hole, and it's suggesting this, this material here is mineralized as well with core rock here. So I think uh, we'll have an interesting time pattern drawing this out. Uh, apart from that, there is an eastern anomaly in this area here. This is arsenic, which shows the eastern anomaly up, but it's blind. Uh, this is the this is unicorn in here with bismuth. Sorry, it's bismuth, bismuth anomalism, uh, arsenic anomalism. You can see it pronounced bismuth in this area here. <coughs> we think this is actually hiding another. Well, okay, is, is indi indicative of a concealed system, similar to Unicorn. Uh, there are some uh, geochemical bridges in this area here suggesting that there's structural continuity. Okay, so just rounding up with uh, Molly industrial uses. Um, it's not the sort of thing Australia mines, so um, people are not particularly used to it. It's used as, as a hardening agent. Um, and the idea now is because iron is so expensive to add some moly into it, so the total amount of iron goes down. Uh, it's very corrosion resistant. I think they use about a million square feet in every nuclear reactor. Um, and uh, I think it's a lot less toxic than uh, tungsten, for example. It's used as a catalyst in the petrochemical industry. It's used in new electronics like solar panels. Uh, there's a shortage predicted in about uh, 220,000 tonnes per annum at the moment. Uh, Price-wise, uh, $34,000 per tonne, uh, compare, comparing with copper, um, varies between you know four and five, five times more than copper, and that's with the price down at the moment. So. Um, gearing up to do a lot more um, drilling, and uh, um, we've um, established a new core cutting facility here. Um, in the local community. Um, just to give you another shot of what it looks like. Non-toxic. Uh, this is the um, situation with our, I suppose, our competitors. Uh, Molly Mines, 450,000 tonnes at uh, somewhat similar grades to what we're looking for around here on mass. Show what's happening to that text. Now, just bear in mind, this is in, just in the top part of the um, ridge, Unicorn Ridge. Um, I can capitalisation for my minus 23, this is about 12 million. Uh, silver grades, a little bit lower. Uh, it's probably around about that order, and that's probably what we're looking for with copper. Um, the feature about the Climax style is they tend to get richer as you go down. Um, some of the large plumes are, are more mineralised, so <coughs> That'll be interesting times ahead. Just to round up a bit, case study in back of it. Uh, previously, a uh, course Monzo grand diorite style, and so I think it's been reclassified now. Uh, recent expansion, $500 million, around 11 million tonnes, and that's their grade now. I should say Henderson actually makes money less than 500 ppm, almost two kilometres depth. Um, okay, so uh, minimal copper and silver. So we, we, we're, uh, I guess the upshot is that we have some copper and silver, which which might be you know, uh, quite useful. Okay, so uh, regional exploration, of course, unicorn ticks right through. We've got a lot more work to do there, of course, but um, there are quite a few other prospects. We've done some limited drilling at North Mammoth, which is a nine kilometre system. It's huge. Um, Morgan, we think we've flown over the top of that. We're getting closer, we're zeroing in on Morgan. Also another Molly play, and uh, quite a few others. Dinner Creek, uh, 
This morning the old days found golden limestone down south of that. So just going to Chaburu country. Uh, okay, so the mining scenarios, <coughs> we think we've got a strong case to uh, uh, have a mining scenario there on the top of the ridge, uh, a small open cut, and then uh, we'd be looking at um, underground below, of course. Uh, dry. Most of the water is very deep in our drain, below creek level, so that would be handy. Uh, the Climax style has low sulphur. Compared to <coughs> free coppers, our sulphur is less than 2%. So acid mine drainage risk is uh, significantly less than a coal free cover. No, no, no known native tide issues for previous clients. Uh, <coughs> It's one asset, apart from the fact that most of the other Molyneux mines are very remote. Um, I have to say this is probably one of the best uh, you know, scenarios for a porphyry I've seen. Uh, it's been, as, as Richard has mentioned, it's been in the news quite a bit of late. Um, and I have to say, we've had fantastic community support. I've uh, given people plenty of time to object uh, to the idea of um, having a project up there. And I have to say, it's been and very good. A lot of common sense questions, but apart from that, it's been quite good. Um, okay, the program. I'm trying to uh, fast uh, fast track this. Um, as Richard mentioned, um, got a maiden resource coming out. That'll go into inferred resource in 2012. Uh, halfway through that, we'll go to pre feasibility scoping studies. So, pre scoping studies already starting. Yes, uh, yes, okay, so 18 months, two years. Um, I think Bruce was saying it uh, might be a little bit longer than that, but uh, okay. Um, <coughs> the, the message there is start as early as possible. Um, I think the fantastic uh, community support will help with that. Um, I have to say, DSC have been fantastic up there as well. Couldn't be more helpful. Uh, so we're, we're looking at a situation, decision to mine, which we've uh, Delay till about uh, 2014, um, and um, uh, you know, mining in the mining scenario about mid uh, 2015. We're going well. Uh, board management, uh, Lindsay, our new managing director, has been very very active and uh, it's uh, really showing. Uh, Chris Bain, some of you might know, he's, he's been. Um, you know, doing a lot of uh, fundraising for people and uh, as a, working as a corporate advisor for many people. He's so quite experienced. Dean, of course, you, most of you might know Dean, my partner in crime when we started off uh, dark mining. And uh, Stephen Pake, you might know him as well, a driller uh, for Bort. And uh, uh, Stephen actually financed uh, Dean and myself when we first got going. Richard, of course, you know, and uh, we, we're, we're lucky to have Richard on board. Uh, as a specialist in uh, corporate law. So the summary is dropped at it. Yes, I'll, I'll pray. Um, okay, I think an important point is we've really discovered a new mineralisation province. And one of the reasons is the border region has just been totally ignored. Um, when I picked the area, it was vacant. Um, and you have to ask yourself why. Uh, okay, so it's a classic uh, mineralised porphyry, uh, Climax type. Um, strong similarities to Climax and Henderson. There'll be a publication out on this fairly soon in AIG, uh, which will look at that a little bit more. Uh, very favourable project parameters, uh, renewable power, water logistics, workforce, active workforce is uh, an interesting point. A fantastic airport there built by the Snowy Scheme. Um, Camp Cove, in terms of accommodation, there's lots, lots of housing, there's, there's really facilities are very good there. Um, experience in Keysey Board, uh, strong pulp on additional porphyry targets, which we'll hear a bit more about towards the end of the year. Uh, there's other prospects there, of course, gold, uh, Mountain View, we've done a bit of work on, there's some interesting stuff there, that a large, very large arsenic anomaly to the south of this. Um, but our focus is uh, on uh, the porphyry, 
simply because of the size and the potential in the pipeline of other poor fish coming on this train. So I guess for a little company like Dark, we, we need to put that focus somewhere. But, you know, the funding's been pretty tight, so I think we've done a fairly good job um, getting where we have. Uh, but we have looked at this and we're looking at uh, uh, getting partners into to forward, further some of the gold prospects. Um, I don't know if anybody's been up to um, the Buckland River area at all, but uh, there's miles and miles of mic in that, in that area. Um, so the style at Fairleys is disseminated gold. Um, and uh, this, this is quite an interesting. I, I actually personally opened cut mine this in uh, 93. Tough work. When things get tough as a geologist, you turn into a gold mine. That's about it.